But in empathy, as I mentioned, is being able to feel what others feel. That's important. And it's the ability to put yourself in the shoes of other people and see things from their point of view. It's good to have that. Amen? Emotional empathy is the ability to feel what the other person is feeling. That's very good. Because they say that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So let me show you how that works in this church. People don't care how much I know, because I'm the preacher, until they know how much you care. Did you catch that? They don't care how much I know. My preaching won't matter that much because I'm the last person's voice they hear when they come in. But you're greeting on the sidewalk. You're greeting in the lobby. You're serving coffee out there. Come on, somebody. You, you're online accommodating the people in the chat. They have questions. People don't care how much I know until they know how much you care. Like you're the extension of what comes from this pulpit and from my heart as the pastor of this house. Does that make sense? So you've got to care enough to do something. And that's the next thing is compassion. So you need humility, empathy, and compassion. Compassion goes a step further than empathy. It takes action to alleviate the suffering of the other person. You've got to care enough to do something. You can cry with somebody all you want. That's a beautiful thing. But have you know the person who does the next thing is to help them alleviate their problem does a greater thing. So service in the kingdom of God, sum it up, is motivated always by pure love. Jesus is the, 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 the example. Everything was moved by compassion. He wasn't trying to show off. This is why when Herod finally met Jesus, he said, come on, show us a miracle. And Jesus said, nah, you know, crooked and perverse generation seeks a sign. I ain't going to give you no sign. I'm not a magician. I'm not here to entertain you. When he saw things that required compassion, then compassion made him release the power of heaven. Are you following that? How is your compassion level? How is your empathy level? The Good Samaritan is another great example of serving from pure love. I won't tell that story. Some of you know it well. Another thing about service in the kingdom is it's done from the heart. Colossians tells us this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22, it says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. It is not from anyone but Christ that you will receive your reward for serving. And if you can serve knowing that, then you don't worry about whether people see you or not, because what men don't see, God sees. I know there are people in this church, and I, I, I know them well. They serve above and beyond the call of duty. I've got a crew of ladies that come in here every Saturday, man, and you better get out of their way. These sisters come in here, and they're going to clean this church up. They're going to start at the lobby. They're going to they're clean those bathrooms. When you come in here on Sunday morning and those bathrooms are spick and span, when you look and you see that lobby shiny and nice and prim, that's not how you left it. That's not how you left it, I would submit to you. But these women come in here, no one sees them. They ain't doing it because um, they think Bishop is watching them. Man, they're doing the thing that Jesus loves. No one sees, I don't care. I know what I do matters because it's helping to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, clap your hands for the cleaning ladies. Every week, whether rain or shine, they come in and they get the job done. I want to honor them. Jesus said, whatever you do, do it heartily. And man, they work heartily. That's why I don't get in their way. I say hi, and I step out of their way because they're coming here to work heartily. And they clean this whole place up, top to bottom, second floor, this floor. Are you with me, somebody? That's the thing that pleases Jesus. That is the art of serving above and beyond the call of duty. There's a blessing in serving. Many, many blessings. I wish I could tell you some stories. It's a bonding experience. When you join a team, you get a chance to, to bond and to get to know people that you only wave at or see from a distance. I would submit that there are people in here that you walk by week after week and you never even notice them because they become a part of the building. They're fixtures. There's the people who are serving you all the time. But when you start serving, you begin to bond. You get to know people and there's a richness. When you build relationships in the house of God, they become deep relationships. They become family. It becomes a part of you. It's a growing experience. 
Another benefit of serving is I get to grow spiritually because there's something about, amen, when you've got to serve and you've got to show up and you've got to serve when no one's looking, amen, the very things I told you when I was out there serving people, driving a bus up and down the streets of New York and getting cursed at, being in service was teaching me how to put the principles that I was learning from the pulpit to work. When you serve in the house of God alongside people that sometimes you find difficult to get along with, sometimes you find difficult to love, yet there's something about that that if you know the value of what is happening, it's going to cause you to grow up. You're going to become more mature. You're going to become a better lover of people. It's a learning experience. And it's also the pleasure of your master that you and I serve. And when God is pleased with us, promotion comes from the Lord. When God is pleased with our work, promotion will come from him. So the art of serving is what Jesus taught. And he's going for nothing less than a complete shift of my character, a, a complete change, a, cl a complete makeover, a complete jettisoning of the values of the world, and an embracing, a full-bodied embrace of the values of the kingdom of God. And as you and I learn to serve in that spirit, amen, we're on our way to mastering the art of serving. We are becoming servants.